Welcome back. Uh, it's Cosmo and John with Solutions 8, the greatest Google Ads agency on the planet. I think that's fair to say, don't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, who would imagine no question. something like that? Well, if you if you question it, give it a try. Good. You see. know what we should do? Here's what I'm going to throw down. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. I want to go toe to toe with any Google Ads manager in the world. And that, we'll that's push, good idea. Yeah, pound for pound. So, and maybe just keep this challenge open, like. And there's got to be a way to do this. You run two campaigns, apples to apples, um, and just see who wins. Yeah. Yeah, or we can go through like a Q&A where like the audience can ask questions. Oh, and when we have an audience. <laughs> and when we have an audience, yeah. we just better watch out. <laughs> I looked at our views, by the way. And right now we're like tracking, like we're averaging, I think, six views a video. I watch it five times. Yeah. Well, what's sad <laughs> is we have 20 employees. So it's kind of like, who's not watching our video? You're all fired, except for you five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, comment to keep your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see if there's if you don't comment this week, you better watch out. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's really funny. Cool. So today we're going to talk about keyword sculpting. Now, there's two phases to keywords, right? There's keywords mining and keyword sculpting. Why are we starting? Yeah. With sculpting? Why are we start where? It, sorry. I why are we you. starting with sculpting? Like why why begin there? Well, sculpting is kind of, it's an advanced strategy. And that's kind of what this channel is all about is using advanced strategies. Um, we want to kind of stay away from like the beginning. We'll do keyword keyword mining. Um, we'll do keyword development. That'll be a, in a future video. But um, I really want to keep the channel elevated to those, you know, not like how to add a keyword to Google Ads. Like that stuff, you know, that's not that's not what we're, what we're about. So I wanted to try to use an advanced strategy to help um, maybe shine a light on something that, doesn't seem obvious, but then afterwards you're like, oh, that makes so much sense. Like, it's just one of those, like, man, that's a really, that's, that solves a few issues that I've been having, or, or it stops me from having to run around and keep adding negative keywords here and there. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be talking about today's keyword sculpting. That's awesome. And, cool. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So I'll share my screen here. Of course, privacy reasons, you'll see the name up there blurred out. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to show ad copy today just because uh, this is obviously of a real client, but I wanted to share with you what keyword sculpting is and how it can really help segment your campaigns in a really useful way. So you can see here on the left, we have two campaigns. We have more than that, but the two campaigns we're looking at is the non-surgical treatments and then the surgical surgery, so surgical treatments. Now there's different, there's different ad groups in each. You have, um, you know, a sciatica and stenosis treatment here, but you don't have, but you have a sciatica surgery, but no stenosis down here. And so when you're talking about inbound search, people are going to search any way they want to. Um, do I need surgery for my spinal stenosis or um, it, it's surgery free, um, you know, back pain, whatever it may be. So there's going to be ways that people are going to type because they're trying to self-diagnose in this particular instance, or if you have a campaign and you're saying, well, I, they're typing this, but that's not what that's called. It's actually called this. So I have to, I have to figure out why they're typing this when they really mean that. And so what, what keyword sculpting is, is it's adding keywords, not at the account level, which is what we usually recommend, but adding keywords at the campaign level to force the user to see the other campaigns ads. For example, you'll see here in the surgery campaign, we have stenosis. We have obviously other ones here that, you know, are regular negative keywords that we want to add. But uh, you'll see stenosis here in the surgery one, because in the non-surgical uh, campaign, we have the spinal stenosis treatment. You don't need surgery for spinal stenosis. So when people are looking for, um, you know, spinal stenosis surgery, or stenosis, um, if they're if they're making an incorrect statement, they're not going to get a hey here's have a surgery at our location. They're going to see this is a non-surgical, minimally invasive treatment that can help you have a short recovery time. Blah blah blah. So it forces the way, uh, forces a user if, even if they're searching incorrectly or they're searching for maybe not what they what they think. You can have two ad groups or two campaigns running very similar keywords, but if you want them to see the surgery ad, you add the surgery. Uh, keyword as a negative keyword to the other campaign and if you you know vice versa so you can add them to each campaign to say which ad is uh, Google going to show that user because technically if you're looking at spinal stenosis well spinal stenosis and spinal stenosis surgery would still use the same keyword of spinal stenosis so you add and subtract negative keywords from each campaign so that they see the correct ad at the right time got it so you're you're basically building kind of like a, a bulk buy on the front end 
and then you're sculpting using negative keywords inside the ad group. Right. Yeah. And you add them at the ad group or even at the campaign level, um, kind of break them out into like larger groups, but you can add them at the ad group level too, if you wanted to, um, you know, if we oh, so had you're the negative keywords, excuse me, you're adding the negative keywords to the campaign level then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're adding at the campaign level. You can add at the ad group level, but we added it at the campaign level just because this for here, um, we have a surgery and non-surgery campaign. That's how we break out these two campaigns. So if anybody's talking about surgery, we want them to see only the surgery ads. So surgery is a negative keyword in non-surgical. And help me understand, John, I don't know that I, I get the value of doing that. It feels so much harder for what would be the same end result if you just had ultra specific campaigns. Well, well you'll be looking at broad match modified most often for oh, so you're going broader with the terms. Yeah, so if you type in spinal stenosis, and that's my keyword, spinal stenosis, for example, because people are going to look for how to treat. Do I have ways to cure? Is this bad? Do I need surgery? Like all of the different ways that people ask Google about st spinal stenosis, we are the ones that are saying that's not a, a surgery. So when they type in spinal stenosis, if they type in you know surgery, for example, they'll see uh, it'll automatically go to the non-surgical campaign to say this is a non-surgical treatment, more attractive. If you look at all right here, non-surgical treatments up on the screen, you'll see surgery is a negative keyword in non-surgical treatment. That way, if anybody is looking for uh, back pain surgery, I'm not going to want to have them see the uh, back pain non-surgical ad. I'm going to have them look for the back surgery ad. So it's a way for you to, and it's very, very case by case. So it's not like one size fits all. And you have to make sure that your, your client or your campaign, whatever it is, is, is appropriately set for not only the type that you want to portray, but also the highest amount of searches. But you're, you're able to say, if they are having, looking for surgery, add surgery as a negative keyword in the non-surgical treatments, because they're not going to show them non-surgery ones for specific events. No, I see what you're saying now. So this is the opportunity to add keywords on a broad scale that could apply to a business, but still push them away if the search term gets specific enough that they should be going to the higher commercial intent campaigns, right? Right, right. Uh, it's just a so way it's for a us filtering to- filtering mechanism. Yeah, it's like a filtering. Yeah, or yeah, like, a, like a railroad. Yeah. yeah, and then we have our catch all, and then if people search for something that's, you know, triggers maybe a, a better, more applicable campaign, then we make sure that we push them over in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it, for this client, they need non-surgical and surgery treatments. Obviously, both are, are lucrative to them. And if someone's looking for back surgery, you know, just because it's America and this is how capitalism works, they'll absolutely take someone who's looking for the surgery because it makes more money. But it's something that you can you can funnel the, the traffic one way or the other to see the correct ad and get to the correct page um, based on how they're searching and what you want them to see, um, whether it be surgery and non-surgery, or maybe there's a you know mistake in the in the industry that people think, oh, I have to have surgery for this, and no, you can actually not have surgery for that. So if you type in the word surgery, you'll actually see a different ad. Um, yeah, it's a way for us to kind You're of. In perpetuity? Are you? Do you keep this up forever, or are you doing this just to begin identifying you know search terms, negative keywords, and then you adjust later? More often, it's um, it's set in stone. Um, just because it's the, it's not solely focused on lead generation. It's what type of client our client wants. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of times if I, if I change this up, you know, I might, I might generate the wrong lead for the wrong type of surgery. Um, and then I'm, I'm having a disconnect between what the person thinks they're going to be talking about versus what my client generated lead for. Um, so it, you use the rules of the client most often to say, if you have someone for this type of treatment, oh yeah, no, that's definitely a non-surgical treatment. We don't even do that surgery. Great. Well, if they type in the word surgery, we're just not going to show them an ad. Um, but if they're looking for treatment, we'll show them a non-surgical ad. So it's a way for us to to make sure that we're not just going to generate a bunch of phone calls that says, yes, do you do spouse nose surgery? No, we don't. Okay, sorry. And then this is a $12 click that just we wasted. Right. That's it. Well, this should be pseudo applicable to just about anybody with a multifaceted service offering that deals more with the avatar than they do with the offering. Mm -hmm. So with here, it's like anybody with back pain, really. And let's talk about all the delineations of how back pain can manifest itself. So I'm just trying to think about how you would apply this to other industries or other businesses, you know, like tech support or um, IT services. I feel like it's like anybody with network, network infrastructure issues. And then yeah. they 
they canvas that is based off of how they expect that user to engage. Yeah, and we have a uh, we have a dog uh, boarding place, and he only boards dogs. And um, we uh, he was starting to board cats recently because of the issues with COVID, and people just had to you know had to board their their animals if they move or whatever it is or they evacuate whatever it is. And um, we actually had a cat campaign and a dog campaign, dog boarding, cat boarding, adding dog as a negative keyword to cat and cat as a negative keyword to dog. So in case someone's looking for, you know, dog and cat uh, boarding, they would see the dog one first because that's the type of um, type of lead that he wants to generate. So it depends on how they're searching and what you want them to see. But if they say, um, you know, if they're typing a specific keyword, and if they say, well, this is a qualifier, if they type this and this, they should see this ad. But if they type this and that, then they should see that ad over there. And it's a way for them, to, us to funnel two overlapping keywords, but being able to say these two overlapping keywords have two different ads. And depending upon what they're typing alongside of those keywords, they should see different ads. So it's yeah. a way for, for that to kind of match up that way. It's a decision engine. Uh, yeah. I think you explained that really well. So if you want to use redundant keywords in multiple campaigns, you're just pushing the the ad that they see based off of negative keywords. Yeah, and that's and because a lot of times what the, the issue that this is solving is people are gonna say, well, I have, um, you know, dog grooming um, as, as one of my, my campaigns, but I see a bunch of people searching for like dog and cat. Um, and uh, I do cat, but that's a whole different, you know, I outsource that one. So that's actually a different location. So how do I send the page with that one? Um, so it's a really a way for say like, I have this one keyword, but I can do multiple things with it. And rather than going through and identifying every single type of exact match and phrase match keyword that needs to be added so that you can funnel everyone there, um, because phrase match and exact match gets pretty expensive cost per click, you can still use the broad match, but just set up your 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 kind of fu uh, filters that says, well, if they actually did type this word alongside of that keyword, send them this way. That makes perfect sense. This is brilliant. That's it. That's keyword sculpting. <laughs> And cool. So if you're watching, you have questions, uh, drop them in the comments. You probably got it a lot faster than I did. And uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's be buddies. Yeah. Ring that bell. Yeah. And we're going to see you all tomorrow with another uh, just droplet of genius. Good stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye.